Hi everyone. Uh, in this lecture, I'll discuss the test setup for a uh, for measuring the parameters of a common drain configuration, and we'll also discuss some few interesting circuits. Uh, I mean, related to common drain configuration. So first shown here is the setup that you can uh, that you can try out in a simulation software. Any of the simulation softwares. So this is again a familiar setup. If you recall uh, the common source configuration or the common gate configuration, I've always ensured that there is a resistance RB that connects the drain to gate. Okay, and uh, at the DC operating point, the drain potential. Uh, since the current is fixed, if if you if you fix your gate potential, the current through the MOSFET is fixed. So for example, if I fix the gate potential to some gate voltage. Because the current through the MOSFET is fixed, source potential is also fixed. Okay, I'm fixing the potential, the forcing this. If I can somehow force the gate voltage, then the source voltage is also fixed because the current through the MOSFET is fixed. And drain is connected to the highest potential possible, which is VDD. So you can be sure that the device will be unless your gate potential goes a VT higher than drain, you can be sure that your uh, MOS device will be in saturation. So therefore. One easy way of biasing, uh, I mean, is that we can directly connect a resistor. I have put a voltage source Vx here. So the gate voltage, the gate voltage with respect to ground is simply Vdd minus Vx. So Vdd is the voltage at this node with respect to ground. And in this loop, so again, this voltage Vg is with respect to some common ground. Okay, the same ground with which Vdd is measured. I mean, uh, with respect to which this node, the drain node is, is measured or, you know, yeah, the potential is now measured with respect to that same ground. Okay. So this setup, again, I've shown the load resistance, source resistance here. So you can then AC couple, capacitively couple the uh, input signal at this node. Okay. Uh, again, the same things hold. You should ensure that your RB value is really, really high. So in fact, at this point, the only thing that RB value will come into picture uh, if you look at the AC, if I draw the AC equivalent of this circuit, you will have something like this. You will have RS and RB. And this is the gate potential, small signal gate potential. So to ensure that most of the voltage drops entirely across RB, you should just choose your RB much greater than the source resistance. So that's the only criterion required from this simulation. Okay. Yeah. Now, uh, since it's a common drain configuration, there are there, there is other very trivial way of implementing it. Uh, what we can do is instead, uh, I can uh, I don't need a, a resistance RB to bias it or you don't need AC coupling. You can directly apply a DC voltage source and apply the AC signal in series with it. Okay, so the DC voltage at this node is going to be just VG. So since the current through this is fixed, I'm calling it IDQ, the source node voltage is also fixed your VGS will be VG minus VS and that will be root, square root of 2 IDQ upon beta n. Uh, if you remember, uh, you can go through the previous lecture, what is beta n? Beta n is mu n C ox W bell plus VTH. This will be your VGS. So from this you can calculate, if I fix VG then VS is fixed. The voltage of, uh, the potential at VS can be exactly known. Okay. So this way also you can test, uh, you can actually bias the circuit. Again, the same things remain to find the output impedance. I'll use a current source uh, and then, you know, inject a current source of zero DC current at the node wherever I want to measure the impedance and see the voltage, monitor the voltage there. So that's it about the test setup to for the common drain configuration. Okay, the, we can easily do this kind of biasing. We could not do that for common uh, drain, uh, common source configuration because the drain potential was not properly fixed. But here, luckily, in the common drain configuration, uh, here the drain voltage is also fixed. It's exactly defined. Okay. Yeah. So now I'll solve some two interesting problems. Now that we have done most of the single stage amplifiers, so we'll solve an interesting problem. So shown below is a circuit here. Uh, shown here is a circuit. And you're supposed to find the voltage V0 in terms of Vx and uh, Vy. And it's given that ignore R0, so you can assume R0 is infinity. So lambda is 0. And it's given that both these devices are identical and they both are biased with a similar transcript. So every, all the other parameters are same. Dimensions are same. Currents are same. Okay. So how do you analyze this? Since there are two inputs, we'll apply the principle of power position. So first I'll assume Vx is present. And uh, 
vx vx only is present and vy is zero and then i'll calculate what should be the output so i have shown the circuit here so i have for the first part i've assumed only vx is present that's what i've shown here the second part the second half of the circuit i've assumed vy is present and v, vx is zero okay we'll apply over position so again in the first circuit is actually if you see uh, the input is applied the input is actually applied at the gate and output is taken at the source it's a common drain configuration so common drain configuration you should look at what is the load impedance if i look down the load impedance is infinity because i've given r not is infinity okay you can see that because this mos device just acts like a current source i mean the its gate is at ac ground so vgs is zero so the only there is no gm vgs component of current flowing the only thing it has is just r not but since r not is given to be infinity so this is like an open circuit load and the you should find what is the gain and r not is infinity even for the upper device so if r not is infinity if you recall from the previous lecture the small signal current in this device cannot change because the, this part is open circuit so the small signal current is zero which means vg should be equal to vs so your output will be simply it will track it will perfectly be a source follower vo1 will be equal to vox vo1 is the voltage because of vx alone the output voltage in that case is going to be vx now in the second case when only v vy is present and vx is zero now this is nothing but input is at the gate and output is at the drain so therefore this is a common source configuration okay so in a common source configuration again r not is infinity so looking down the impedance is infinity okay so whenever you are analyzed to ask to analyze a circuit you just need to we have derived the expressions in terms of load resistance as well so for this circuit r not is infinity but what about the load that is connected upward i mean if you see the impedance the impedance looking into the source of this device is going to be 1 by gm and that will act as a load so i can connect a load of value 1 by gm to this circuit and the, there will be a current i'll just directly analyze this so there will be a current gm vi flowing in this direction gm vy flowing in this direction and that current fully flows through the output impedance of the upper device which is 1 by gm so you will get a gain of minus 1 right gm into minus 1 by gm i mean uh, minus gm into 1 by gm you will get minus 1 so the voltage is minus y so when i add the two uh, when i i can directly add the two outputs so this is the output finally i will get in the presence of both vx and vy so this circuit is a subtractor it subtracts the two voltages okay if vx equal to vy you will get a zero output so for example if i had given a circuit where oh, sorry both the inputs are shorted and an input vi is applied to them say this is ac ground and vc biasing is biasing circuitry is not shown in this so the output here will be zero because this guy the, the this guy will be trying to increase this this guy will be trying to reduce this voltage okay so it will both be the gain is uh, the forward path gain through this device is one and through this device it is minus one right so in a common drain configuration if i open circuit the source the gain is one so the, let's say I apply Vx here. The, this would also be Vx. Okay, the gain will be exactly one. In a common source configuration, on the other hand, this is for common drain configuration. In a common source configuration, on the other hand, you are terminating it the load with an impedance of one by gm, right? So they are, when you look into when you look up, the load resistance is one by gm, and you are applying Vy at this node. So you have a current gm Vy flowing here. So the voltage developed across this will be minus Vy. Okay. So if Vx equal to Vy, you will get a zero output. Okay, it behaves like a simple subtractor. Now let's look at this circuit. So I have connected four resistors like this, and I've applied inputs X1, X2, X3, X4 to the four resistors. And the four resistors are joined at this point. And at this node, there is another resistor of value R dash connected to this. So now if you are asked to find what is the voltage at this node. So for the time being, first we'll assume R dash is infinity. First, if R dash is infinity, what would happen is that I'll just explain how do you find the voltage. I can apply the superposition principle again. So I can short, assume only X1 is present and short circuit X2, X3 and X4. So then you will end up getting a circuit like this. You will have R and three resistors will come in parallel. This, so the, again, this should be grounded, this should be grounded and this should be grounded. All the three other three resistors will come in parallel. So that the three parallel resistors, I can model that as R by three. So 
due to x1 the voltage at the output is going to be just x1 alone it's going to be 1 by 4 r by 3 by r plus r by 3 you will get 1 by 4 into x1 so similarly you can find for all the voltages you will get a final voltage here i'll call the node as v0 you will be getting it as x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 by 4 okay now the problem is the instant i connect say a load resistance here so I'm, I'm trying to do an averaging so average of all the four voltages i could get an averaging circuit but the instant i connect a load resistance say rl then what will happen is that every instant you would be getting rl in parallel with r by 3 okay so you will actually have an expression like this rl parallel r by 3 divided by r plus rl parallel r by 3 okay so this into x1 plus x2 plus x3 plus x4 so that's the result we'll be getting okay it will sum all the voltages but it will not be 1 by 4 so this circuit can be seen as an averaging circuit it adds averages up all the four voltages so in the similar way try we will try solving the circuit shown in this figure okay so here you have four devices of width w and all the four again uh, this supply is just shown for here uh, for 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 reference we can assume that it is ac ground and four voltages x1 x2 x3 and x4 are applied at the gates of these devices and then we are supposed to find the voltage at this node this is v naught the size of the device at the bottom is 4w and gate is applied to a bias by a uh, gate is fixed at a potential given by vb okay you are supposed to find what is the voltage small signal voltage v naught again it's given in this problem that i have not written it here lambda is zero or your r naught is infinity small signal r naught is infinity and we can automatically see that the device size is four times here. The current will also be four times. If these, each of these devices carry a current I, the DC current of this device of width 4W will be 4I. Okay. So, yeah. But it's given that lambda is zero or R0 is infinity for all the devices. Okay. Irrespective of the sizes, for all the devices, R0 is infinity. If that is the case, then how do we solve this? So, we'll apply the same superposition principle. So now, for the first circuit, I have x1 present and the remaining all the inputs are 0. So now you actually have at this node, if you look at the output node, you actually have three devices like this. And in fact, all their drains are at same potential, which is AC ground. Gates are also at ground, so I'll, I'll short all the gates. So now if you see, you can say that these three MOSFETs are in parallel. Okay, so the width of all the three devices doubles. I mean, I can say that all the three three MOSFETs are in parallel. So I can treat it like a single MOSFET with thrice the current and thrice the dimensions. So the GM will also be thrice. So looking impedance in this side, it's going to be one by three GM. Okay. Or you can see that there are three individual MOSFETs. When you're looking into the source with gate and drain, gate and drain grounded AC at AC ground. The looking in impedance of each MOSFET is going to be 1 by GM. So 1 by GM in parallel with 1 by GM in parallel with 1 by GM. Okay, you can add the three conductances and invert it. So the three conductances is going to be GM plus GM plus GM. And you invert it, you get the resistance 1 by 3 GM. Okay, so finally it is 1 by 3 GM. And if you recall from the previous lecture, I said the load resistance is now 1 by 3 GM and R0 is infinity. So it is, you can, you can see that this MOSFET, again, uh, if you recall, we, we said that we can draw this as a source transformed over, I mean, uh, the, uh, the entire source follower. When you look at the source, it will look like a source transformed voltage. I mean, the voltage value will be same as X1, but the output resistance will be transformed and that value will be 1 by GM for a single device. This is in series with 1 by 3 GM. So you will get a voltage of X1 by 4. I'm ignoring the bottom transistor. The bottom transistor, if you look at it, the 4W, we are looking into this drain and both gate and source are grounded at AC ground. So the impedance looking into the drain is going to be R0. But because your R0 is infinity in this problem, uh, sorry, in this because if R0 is the impedance of the single device, for this device it's going to be R0 by 4. So recall, uh, just to refresh your memory, your R0 is 1 by lambda ID. So for a given channel length, lambda is fixed. So for your given channel length, as you keep increasing the bias current and the dimensions, your number of fingers or the width, your current will increase and your R0 will linearly, I mean, decrease with the bias current.
okay not linearly it has a hyperbolic relationship so it will keep reducing so r not would have been r not by 4 had r not been a finite value but because r not is infinity even though the r not is lower for the bottom device the device with width 4w it really doesn't matter so i have not included in the calculations so each voltage will contribute a value of x1 by 4 and x2 by 4 and x3 by 4 and so on okay so this in a way is like an averaging circuit so in fact if i connect n devices in series uh, i mean say n devices in a in a connection like this so if i connect n devices all identical devices carrying same bias currents and dimensions are also same and then i'm connecting n such devices and all these drains are connected to say supply then if i apply x1 x2 x3 till xn here and uh, connected it to a big device of width nw and this is fixed to some v bias voltage and if i ask you to find the voltage at this point it's simply it's directly simply going to be the average of all the voltages xi i going from 1 to n 1 by n so this will be your output voltage okay so again this is one interesting application so here again we don't really care about what the load impedance is as long as the 1 by gm is smaller than the load resistance whatever you connected the load the circuit is going to behave like a proper averaging circuit it's you are going to get a gain of i mean um, it's going to be a perfect averaging circuit okay so uh, that's it for uh, this lecture I, this is more of a continuation of common drain amplifiers okay so in the next lecture, I'll start with a discussion of uh, common collector amplifiers.